Hello and welcome to the Wellness Trinity Podcast, where we interview top holistic experts and bring you natural solutions for modern day wellness. Let's get started with your host, Dr. Jacqueline. Hi, welcome. Thank you for joining the Wellness Trinity Podcast. I'm Dr. Jacqueline, naturopathic doctor and owner of the Wellness Trinity, where we provide natural solutions for modern day wellness. Just a little disclaimer before we get started, what we discuss in this podcast is for educational and entertainment purposes only. What you do with the information is to be used at your discretion as the recommendations are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any diseases. So today I have a special guest on the show. Her name is Dr. Grace Liu. And we actually met at a seminar for the Great Plains Lab. And uh, let's see, about, I want to say, six to eight months ago or so. And I was just, yeah, yeah. So I was just excited to meet you and sit right next to you. Um, It just so happened by fate that she was sitting right to my left and um, has this abundance knowledge about gut health and how it relates to so many various things. So today we are going to talk about sexual health and the gut microbiome. And a little bit about Dr. Grace. She is the founder of the Gut Institute. She is a formulator of probiotics, host of the Microbiome Medicine Conference in December 2016, October 2018, and September 2019, and Kiel SIBO Summit in October 2019. She believes in educating clinicians and coaches at the Gut Institute to heal and improve 1 billion guts and impact the world around us. Dr. Grace Liu, PharmD, is an IFM trained functional medicine practitioner and founder of the Gut Institute. She is a clinical pharmacist with a doctorate in practice for 20 plus years and specializes in complex disease management. Dr. Grace Liu PharmD consults and helps clients gain optimal performance through rebuilding the microbiome after damage from modern living. She uses nutrigenic tools and other advanced functional lab testing to give the the solutions, strategies, and treatments that reverse modern gut dysbiosis and disease. The Gut Institute motto is bugs over drugs. So Dr. Grace, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me, uh, Dr. Jacqueline Gutierrez. I'm so grateful to be here. It was awesome for me to meet you too when we were at the seminar. We were like such great students sitting right up front, first row. It was such a good time. Like it was such a blast. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, You know, the nerds are sitting together in the front. (laughs) Yep, yep. And then we had Todd uh, Watts sitting right behind us. Uh That was great. (laughs) Yeah, and also the the lady that does all the hair mineral analysis was sitting right behind us too. So yes, this this awesome little group of uh, really people sitting right around me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, like jolly times. Yeah, so, you know, your bio is so extensive and I just wanted you to expand on a couple different things that you think the audience would be interested in hearing about like the movies and other things that you're doing or have done. Yeah, we um, are so excited to have the platform, the Gut Institute. It's an educational platform. Uh, I train and teach uh, clinicians and uh, health coaches all about gut health as it relates to immunity, recovering autoimmunity, uh, cancer, as well as inflammatory conditions, which we all have appear to have in our mondays. And we also, you know, love sharing. So I'm, I've been interviewed on different um, movies, docu series, you know, as well as um, podcasts and summits. And it's just really fun to share what we do, uh, because what we see is uh, things work really rapidly. You know, I first started in uh, functional medicine almost ten years ago, and initially, like a lot of the protocols, just didn't work. I don't know if you found that in your endeavors in functional medicine. And as I dug deeper, no one was taking into account the microbiome. And we're so lucky now. There's so much research and development occurring in microbiome. Um, in the last just, you know, 10 years of space, um, all this data has come out. And, you know, just like conventional medicine is about 50 years behind the times, functional medicine now is, I believe, like 5 to 20 years behind the times. They have not cut up to, caught up to what uh, modern microbiome medicine is all about. You know, like when, when I talk to leaders in functional medicine or uh, you know, people, our clients who have gone through various, you know, protocols, you know, they've been given traditional kind of breath testing, things like that. None of these are very super accurate to determine really what's going on at the core, at the small intestinal level, like parasites, fungal overgrowth. Uh, breath testing does not detect any of that. It only detects uh, methane or hydrogen uh, overproduction. And because our gut is so complex, you know, there's cross-feeding. We have some bugs that eat sulfur. We have some bugs that eat um, 
that produce sulfur gas. We have other bugs and uh, candida that uh, produce uh, carbon dioxide gas. You know, it's, it's an amazing microcosm there. And we're so grateful for them because they recycle carbon, just like our plants, you know, do. They take literally air, right? Carbon dioxide, make it into carbs, uh, fiber and carbohydrates in plants. So we literally, our gut can do the same thing too. We literally can take air, <laughs> oxygen or CO2 or sulfur, you know, or other things in the gas, in the air, right? Hydrogen and really make it into magical metabolites for us. Things that keep us healthy, strong, happy, whole, sexually active, you know, high libido, not low, low libido, chronic fatigue, you know, multiple autoimmune problems. Uh, so we, we can be so grateful for this silent organ that people really forget about. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Thank you for expanding on that. So what about male wellness and energy? What are you seeing in terms of challenges with that? Wow. You know, uh, it was so funny because we were hanging out right at the uh, gut conference. And I <laughs> like, I remember uh, Javon and like, uh, you know, other entrepreneurs like us, we're all hanging out. And um, I'd say it's like pretty epic. Like when you have your own business, you can get really tired because of mental things, because of um, just, you know, being busy 24-7. Um, but really right now, like epically, um, I have what we do at the Gut Institute. I work with like executives, really brilliant multitasking moms and endurance athletes that do all kinds of wild exercises, extreme endurance sports and MMA fighters. I do supplement programs for some uh, MMA fighters. And um, without a doubt, uh, people push themselves so hard. And then when I query them, you know, one of my assessments in looking at adrenal and hypothalamus pituitary, you know, gut health, thyroid health. I find that a lot of people have low body temps, you know, when I, they're really highly functioning. Uh, uh, and uh, when I query them, like men don't have morning wood in the morning, like really everyone should, even if they're, even our 67 year old men are able to resurrect that and have that. Women on the women's uh, sexuality side, you know, so many women don't even want to have sex. And then when we check their hormones, they're all estrogen dominant, which means like they actually may have tons of estrogen. I mean, low levels of estrogen. They may low have low levels of estrogen, but the relative amount is way higher than their anabolic progesterone hormone. And we, and for women, we need progesterone. It's our calming hormone. It makes us fertile. You know, it makes us happy and whole. It makes us sleep. So a lot of women just can't sleep until they actually get their progesterone up to a normal, natural level. So with our uh, clientele, we reduce body fat, brain fog, and fatigue in six months or less. And when it comes to men's health, in two weeks or less, usually we resurrect morning wood. For some clients, you know, they're older or there's more, you know, deep dysbiosis and chronic inflammatory things going on, maybe two months or less. But generally what we see is across the board, no matter what age, whether they're 60 or 70, you know, or 16 or, no, I'm kidding. We don't work with, uh, we work with all ages actually, um, uh, or 20 year olds and 30 year olds, um, we're able to, you know, resurrect normal function in generally two months or less. And then along with that, you know, people get ripped, they reduce body fat without even changing workout or diet. Uh, they have way more endurance and energy and they make better decisions. Let's say they're executive. Now they have clear mind and they make better decisions that affect their company and the employees they have and things like that. For moms, they're able to be present with their family instead of just sitting in a corner, you know, watching their kids play, you know, they're able to engage, you know, really be active, present with their family and their community, their churches and uh, businesses. And for the athletes, it means money. You know, they podium, they win, they don't get hit in the head. I really try to, you know, work on brain health. We reverse a lot of CTBI damage, concussion damage, because it's so integral. When you break, when you break the brain, like through, you know, like for fighters or having a fall on a bike or something, you know, when you break your brain, you're going to break your gut instantly. That's what studies show. Stress instantly breaks our gut. As you know, in the hospital setting, we would do all these stress ulcer prophylaxis because being in the hospital and being ill, chronically ill or acutely ill is really stressful for the body. Yeah. Yeah. And then just to expand on females, um, I find a lot of people that are infertile, they have fibroids, uh, PMS, achy boobs. I mean, I, I know you see all that kind of stuff too. Exactly. Achy boobs, migraines, headaches, bloating, all of it. And women who have to shave their face because they're PCOS with cysts or fibroids, you know, they have a high testosterone, but their progesterone is relatively low. Um, some of our ladies don't have to shave every other day anymore for their faces, you know, because of this imbalance. Um, and um, we, for cysts and fibroids, it's really interesting uh, when our clients go back and meet with their OBGYN and they try to ultrasound and, and determine the size, you know, of, of the cyst or fibroid, it's gone. Like they can't even find it. Wow. So our ladies, yeah, um, some have already plunked down, you know, 10, 20K for every in vitro fertilization round. 
they're pregnant in six months. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah. I've seen stuff like that happen too. And people think this is just normal that we are infertile or our kids are born autistic and you know, the list goes on at all the stuff that we're studying at the Great Plains. I mean that with all these autistic children, it just breaks my heart. So why don't we expand a little bit on the estrogen dominance and you found a good gut bacteria for that. A good gut bacteria? Yeah, the U bacteria, um, limosum. That one that was supposed to help with estrogen dominance, right? So that's really interesting. Uh, so U bacteria limosum, it's found enriched in healthy centenarians, which most centenarians, if they reach 100 years old, um, they have this incredible phenotype, you know, template. They tend to be cancer-free, chronic disease-free, even despite, you know, being 90, 100 years old. I mean, they're, you know, older, but they don't have the chronic conditions that modern world people have. And it was found in uh, centenarian studies in Italy. Um, they had 17-fold enrichment of this one strain called Eubacterium limosum. And it's so interesting what this does, and so, so do other Eubacterium and other gut flora in our gut, like lactobacilli and even some bifido. They help transform uh, strong, potent uh, estrogens in the body, phytoestrogens from plants, you know, bitter, bitter, usually they're bitter and barky plants, right? Um, like let's say olive leaf or um, uh, 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 other bitters like, you know, purslane, you know, bitter vegetables and cruciferous vegetables, things like that. They transform these phytoestrogens in, into really potent anti-cancer metabolites, strong anti-inflammatories. Um, they also, for instance, like beer or, you know, traditionally fermented foods, they have bitters in them because they kind of protect the plant, preser uh, preserve the drink, they're preservative uh, in, in the drink. Bitters are antimicrobial. They prevent mold, they prevent uh, overgrowth so that the, the fermenta fermented uh, product can be drunk like for, you know, many, many weeks or months later without spoilage. So they're anti naturally antimicrobial um, and they don't use high amounts of it. And these bitters, um, when they get transformed by the gut flora, healthy gut flora in, in happy hosts, right? Um, they become these anti, really potent, like anti-inflammatory, anti, like pro-longevity kind of chemicals to keep people healthy, happy, and strong. Yeah, so I'm fascinated by this transformation because I'm a pharmacist and, you know, in conventional medicine, there's a drug for every, you know, symptom and sign, but then there's also, you know, of course the drug causes side effects and then there's another drug for the side effect, for every side effect it may have, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas we actually have a natural pharmacy in the gut. Our pharmacy is in our gut and it actually is our gut flora. Mm -hmm. we, we, we can keep them happy, resurrect them and bring them back. They do all the magical things for us. Keep us lean, keep us happy, keep us whole, uh, chronic disease free and, and uh, keep us really fertile. So I, I really believe there's two channels that we live in. Uh, one channel is high fertility, low inflammation. So that's a lot, a lot like our centenarians, people who live really long life, long lives without chronic diseases um, and no cancers, no chronic diseases. So they're really, when we look at their hormones, they're really, they're high for their age and they don't have estrogen dominance and they have a great microbiome, it turns out. In fact, they have 17-fold uh, enrichment of something called Eubacterium limosum. They also have um, high amounts of Bifidobacteria longum. This is how they got the name when they discovered this um, particular species. It was found in people with longevity. And we have a high concentration of it in our Bifidomaxis probiotic. It's the highest in the industry. Wow. Nearly half of our probiotic, which is 200 billion, is Bifidobacteria longum. And we, I love it. It helps people transform their gut to the he a healthier place to resurrect the good stuff and, and heal and seal the gut. I was like... I believe so, yeah. We, especially <laughs> if we can reverse autoimmunity in six months or less or other chronic conditions in six months or less. Yeah, it's great. Wow. Well, that's amazing. So how do you test and track a healthy gut microbiome? There are fantastic ways. And I'll tell you about one test that everyone should run. It's called the Gut Zoomer 3.0. Um, there are previous uh, versions. Uh, this is the 3.0 version is the best. They've included a lot of the strains that we consider really healthy and the species that are considered healthy. And they're all listed there. Um, and there's page after page where you can see which ones are optimal and which ones are depleted and low. And my goal is that we resurrect as many as we can. We have two R's that we teach here at the Gut Institute. The first R is restore or resurrect the terrain, tongue to toes. So we have literally bacteria covering every surface of us. And uh, our gut, it's actually exposed to the outside because we have sphincters on the front and back end, right? But it's actually literally outside. Um, so tongue to tail, we want to have really great gut flora, skin, eyes, ear, nose, throat, vagina for women, <clears throat> and, you know, all the way tongue to toes and skin. Uh, the other R is to reset rhythms. 
So for a lot of people who are infertile or having no morning wood, no libido, women who have PCOS cysts or fibroids <clears throat> or endometriosis or other kinds of autoimmunity or HPV in the vagina, you know, BV or uh, yeast infections, their terrain is really broken. And then plus, when we look at hormones, they have relatively high estrogens. Like it could be detected or they may have a lot of plastics, phthalates, chemicals that act estrogenically. And you have to kind of just look at them or ask them, like, you know, uh, we don't detect those unless you do a tox, tox panel. So there are a lot of amazing, great tox panels. Um, other things, things we do to check the gut uh, and check for inflammation is obviously a stool test, uh, like gut zoomer is great. And then there's a variety of other ones, but we really like the gut zoomer um, because not only does it detect parasites, but it also has a little bit of detection for candida and a little bit of virus detection. Um, to really see the fungal overgrowth, I love metabolomic testing. So that means urine metabolites because whatever is in the gut, it'll stream out, go into the blood, and then our blood gets filtered by the kidneys, and then we can do a urine test and see what's in there. So there's an amazing test called Great Plains. This is what we got trained on. I have different marker uh, thresholds for the marker compared to what Great Plains has because we see um, pretty healthy people uh, in general uh, half of the time. You know, we work with influencers, executives. You know, they're they're relatively healthy than my other cohort, which are Okay, I hate to say it, but train wrecks. I used to be a train wreck, so I can say that. <laughs> yeah. You know, they want to lose 30, 50 pounds. I had lost 50 pounds at one point. You know, they usually have autoimmunity. I had two autoimmune conditions at one point. The, our clients usually have two, three, or four autoimmune conditions. Yeah. Anyway, um, no matter what kind of condition we're looking at, no matter how complex or simple, people seem to have the root issues, the same problems. So we love using the metabolic test, and we like to look at the nine markers on Great Plains. And my goal is for all the mold markers, markers two, four, and five, to be zero. So we have different thresholds than them. And that's where we see really optimal health happen, like when we get all those markers down. And for the uh, other fungal markers, markers one all the way to nine, the goal is ultimately below one-fifth of the whole range. So the upper range is that top uh, uh, upper limit of orange, you know, that range and below. And we want one-fifth or below. So usually our clients come in and none of these are at goal, you know, depending on what their symptoms are. And really, ideally, two, four, and five, they should be zero. Even if they're mildly high, they're, they indicate something's going on. When we lose the firewalls, the mold actually enters and viruses and other path pathogens and parasites. Yes. And it's just, it's just a reflection of the loss of the firewall. It's not really that, oh, you know, this person's got tons of parasites, blah, blah, blah. You can, you know, you can help people to remove the parasite, but the, the, the root issue is the lack of good gut flora. Mm. And if the treatment... Even if it's functional medicine, if it continues to further degrade and make extinct the native flora, we're going to create more problems. And we see that. Uh, refractment is heavily used. Um, clinical studies show it can cause C. difficile. There are a lot of cases of C. difficile should associate with it. It's not in the literature, but what I see is people get horrific mold and fungal overgrowth after refractment because, hey, you know, it's an antibiotic and not really helpful for people. Like what we see is people initially feel a little bit better for a few days and then bam, like they get all the symptoms they had earlier plus 10 more or more food allergies, or another autoimmune problem, or even cancer. So we have to be really careful about what our manner, our way of, you know, the strategies to help people. We don't want to create the same problem we do as, function, as, con, uh, as conventional medicine, which is blowing out, you know, the whole gut microbiome without restoring it, resurrecting things. And it takes really high potent probiotics to do so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember you saying that you sometimes put people up to a trillion. See? We often do, yes. Yeah. 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 So, okay. So what are the good gut, gut guardians, as you call them, yes. gut guardians that use yes. biotoxins? And then why don't you explain the difference between those and the ones for the um, other toxins that we find? Yes. I'm so glad um, you asked that. So on the gut zoomer, you'll see all the good gut flora. Uh, I call them the ABCs, acromantia. That's one of our main ones. Actually, there's a sweet spot for acromantia because it loves mucus. And so if someone's got like you know, allergy problems, histamine, and a lot of parasites, they're going to have like, not just like a runny nose sometimes and histamine issues, they also will have a runny gut. So sometimes we see acromantia overgrowing. That's a sign that there's a lot of inflammation going on. That's not, ide not ideal. So we have kind of a, I have a sweet zone for acromantia. Should be about one to 5% of a healthy gut. When it exceeds that, then you kind of are looking at a lot of, you know, histamine and runny gut kind of issues and inflammation. Okay. So the um, ABCs, um, the B stands for bifido, particularly bifido longum. And there's good bifido and bad bifido. So when we look at the panels on gut zoom, which is really cool because it's mostly the good gut, gut, good, good bifido. There's some bifido that eat sugar and carbs. We don't want so, we don't need so much of them. We, we need them, but we don't need a dominance of them. 
So that's why when people go on a lower carb diet or even keto, they feel better because they have too many of the sugar and carb eaters, but they're, they, they're out of balance. They're missing the mucus, uh, the, the fiber eating probiotics and the fiber eating bifido, like long um, bifido uh, bacteria, lactis. I know some of these names your audience don't really give an F about, but <laughs> I love, I love trick, you know, trickling out their names, but you know, bifido bacteria, lactis, you know, these are all awesome. They're associated with fat loss. They're associated with productive more GABA. Uh, does your audience know what GABA is? You know, I'm sure we have a wide range of people, some that might not have an idea and some that yeah. really want to pick your brain right now like I do. <laughs> <laughs> On so all these GABA, yeah, GABA and serotonin are made by those strains I just mentioned and some other lactose strain. They're all found in a probiotic. But literally, our second brain in the gut, they uh, thrive on the, on the neurotransmitters that good gut flora provide, like serotonin and GABA. Mm -hmm. And GABA is calming. We need this neurotransmitter because it's actually an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So a lot of people are like, Woo! you know, OCD, anal, <laughs> you know, cannot calm down and uh, effing want to control everything in sight because they can't control what's going on in them. They're very agitated mm -hmm. internally. They're like inside, Woo! You know, and then so they got to control everything around them and their kids and their spouse and their partner and their work and blah, blah, blah. And they're just, a F, you know, effing pain in the A, right, to even be around. Well, they've right. got no GABA. They can't calm down. A lot of these people have major addictions. You look at nutrigenomics like GAD1, they're uh, like totally disrupted on GAD1 uh, mutations there, like a lot of red zones. And when you query them, yeah, oh, in high school, I, you know, whatever, college, 20s, you know, they're addicted to everything in sight. Um, or exercise, you know, um, uh, it's the same thing. Um, but, but it's because they lack the GABA from good gut flora usually. And when we're able to bring that back in and lower pathogens that are stealing all their steroids, stealing all their energy and reserves, they feel awesome. They tell me, oh my gosh, this is the first time I feel calm. I'm like, you're joking, right? No. And they're like decades. They've never felt calm. Mm -hmm. Some of our clients, they come, you know, they're on all kinds of antidepressants and drugs and um, lorazepam and other benzodiazepines. That's because GABA hits the same receptor sites. Mm. Uh, to to lower that agitation and calm. Also, people need serotonin, so we can't even sleep well because eighty percent of melatonin, which we release when we're sleeping, comes from serotonin. Mm. And again, eighty percent of serotonin comes from our good gut flora, and it's stored in our enteric nervous system, the second brain, the gut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you just mentioned all those neurotransmitters: the GABA, the serotonin, um, there's dopamine, and there's other ones as well too. Yes. And, uh, when those are off, our hormones are off, right? Um, I would say without a doubt, they, they are analogous, homologous. Yeah. Yeah. When we can help everything in the system, naturally the hormones will come into play and fall into place really well. So what we do though, is we have special protocols, um, for men and women, we do some estrogen blocking, you know, uh, we use something like a botanical called, uh, chrysin passion flower. A lot of these resurrect the good gut flora. I was just telling you about the ABCs, like the C's are, um, clostridialis, also known as from acoutis, um, if you're looking at a panel. And these are butyrate producers, and they love actually um, all kinds of fiber, a, a range of fiber. And many of these are, um, uh, are omnivores in the gut too. Um, we have clostridialis and bacteroides, and they're kind of um, omnivorous. They eat both protein and fats and carbs, complex carbs, fiber. Yeah, and when they're happy, they make these neurotransmitters for us, and they also will heal and seal the gut. So if we can stop inflammation, what we see is the hormones get better. And the reason is because there's an enzyme system called aromatase. Do you think your audience knows about aromatase much? Why don't you expand on that? Yes. So like in conventional medicine, after cancer, many breast cancer women are given aromatase inhibitors. They're very strong, potent uh, drugs. Unfortunately, all the drugs are also associated with cancers because you can't block estrogen um, forever in this enzyme system forever and at a strong rate. It's not normal for the system and there's feedback loops and things like that. Um, what we do is we use botanicals, which are more um, gentle and very like uh, low activity, but um, have safe, safe levels of activity. Now, aromatase is a protective enzyme system for us. You know, when we have stress going on or we've been injured or have trauma, soft tissue trauma, our body wants to heal. So it um, will hyperproliferate tissue, right? It can grow tissue faster when estrogen is higher. Plants have estrogens in it. It's called phytoestrogens. All animals on earth, all insects on earth, all birds on earth have some form of estrogens. In human mammalian systems, we have over 25 different kinds of estrogens. For postmenopausal women, at one point, we were using tons of Premarin, which is a horse estrogen. And there are a variety of, yeah, horse estrogens in that uh, product. And it worked. And there's hardly any side effects associated with it, actually. 
no, um, very rare cancers. Um, it works, you know, it's not perfect. It's horse, you know, estrogens, but it, it actually can work for our system. Um, so um, there's a really amazing study by Kelton Tremelin from the School of Pharmacy in uh, University of South Australia down in Adelaide. He and his group, they took a bunch of really healthy uh, men, uh, about 37 men who were aged like 18 to 40. Um, I think they were in Germany and um, really lean, healthy guys and gave them um, some gram negative uh, cell wall. So these are pro-inflammatory gut flora in the gut. And they're, um, we, we, we all have a small amount, you know, and they're pro-inflammatory. So they took the cell wall at a dose of 0.8 nanogram per kilo, per kilo weight, really low dose. And six hours later, they, the, they observed the testosterone tank. Wow. These men like just, yeah, tank their testosterone. And then, you know, within a day, it all normalizes and stuff like that. But when we have gut permeability, hyperpermeability, in other words, leaky gut, Either it's from stress or bad flora, you know, a lot of fungal overgrowth, parasites, whatever. Not enough of the good flora that would heal and seal the gut. All those good guys I just told you about. Their job is to heal and seal our gut forever, no matter what happens. Yeah. When we lose them, like when, when scientists want to make a model of leaky gut, you know what they do? They either get, give a detergent to the animals or they give an antibiotic. Mm. And then they instantly get leaky gut. And this is now what we see epidemically on earth. You know, all our food all our processed food has food emulsifiers in it because there's fat in it and to make fat taste better, they put emulsifiers in it mm. to hold the flavors and hold, you know, hold the fat in the food without it separating out. And then uh, we're stressed, you know, people stay up late, they're on their phones or, you know, devices. There's just stress, you know, we don't relax in America, not like the Europeans. They have, you know, traditionally have had siestas, right? Um, and, um, they eat together, right? There's a lot of family meals, family cooking, even like making, fermented foods it's a family affair you know a sisterhood affair people prepare these foods together and there's that fellowship that doesn't happen now the only time people see faces perhaps is when they watch game of thrones right yeah that makes sense and then if um well i know that when we're happy it increases things like um certain neurotransmitters as well too so, exactly. Yeah. We see yeah. people hug. We naturally get a boost of oxytocin. But right. when we're fellowshipping, we get lots of oxytocin. We're laughing, sometimes mm -hmm. singing, you know, all these are fantastic. Well, guess what? When we're hugging and kissing our family members and friends, we also share microbes. Mm. That's a broken link that we no longer share. Right. Wow. Except when we go to a gut mastery class together. <laughs> oh, yes. Yes. I and then we're all like, those. <laughs> yeah, we're all like hugging and kissing and like having lots of fun and laughing. And <laughs> so sharing yeah. My biomes with each other. <laughs> yeah. I'll do everything but lick people's butt. No, like dogs. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. I, I'll, I'll pass on that one. <laughs> yeah. I will. I don't even like it when my dog, like, try to put his tongue in my mouth because he would go and lick all these sick dogs' butts. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I get concerned about all the parasites, too. That's going to be passing around. Oh, totally. I know. My dog had everything. I know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So do you think that people need a low carb diet to be able to get rid of these infections? Absolutely not. No, no. Okay. Um, fungal overgrowth and parasites, they love simple uh, energy. So they love sugar and, and refined carbs. When people go keto, what I see is they, be, have, they seem to select out the variants, variants of the most worst kind of pathogens. Because I, I believe the ecosystem is this like thriving ecosystem and it's survival of the most adaptable. So if we steal energy from them, they just burrow deeper. And guess what? They get to our bloodstream. Mm. They can, it's something called MT, microbial translocation. They can go anywhere in our body. It's a highway for them. They can go anywhere. And they literally, like, because our microvilli is one cell layer um, from the tens of trillions of bacteria in the small intestines. There's only one cell layer that separates all the bacteria in food and our bloodstream. And this is... Um, divinely um, designed this way so that we can absorb our food right away after digestion, mm -hmm. after enzymatic break breakdown. But um, parasites and pathogens have, and fungal overgrowth have manipulated that. And then if we, you know, go too low carb for too long, I think they just burrow and then find the bloodstream and get their sugar that way. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we, we can still have complex carbs and fruit while we're trying to fix our gut. I think when people have the proper protocols, so our protocols are four phases. Um, when people work with us, it's a minimum for six months, and we have programs. Uh, we actually have a big, long wait list of a year. We don't really have too many openings right now. But we go big to small. We go parasites first, and then fungal. That's the next size. Literally, fun fungi candida is about 100 times bigger than bacteria. And there's tons of studies that show that a lot of bacteria live inside candida. This is the way they invade the immune system, 
F us up, you know, and then con con you know, con continue to proliferate everywhere. Like for instance, H. pylori, it's really hard to eradicate. Well, that's because you can't eradicate it. It's inside H. pylori. It's H. pylori is inside Candida. Mm. So you actually have to uh, eradicate simultaneously, gently with botanicals, both fungi and bacteria at the same time, mm. while resurrecting the good terrain. Because it's shown many probiotics will lower H. pylori and re uh, re reduce uh, symptoms of um, non-ulcer gastritis, as well as uh, duodenal and gastric direct, uh, gastritis. It's not perfect. Probiotics usually aren't enough alone. But there are some enough probiotic studies that show they make a big impact or even reverse ulcers and gastritis, which are predominantly due to H. pylori or its cousin Campylobacter. So when we do testing with um, the gut Zoomer 3.0 by Vibrant Health or other testing, you know, we can see some of this Campylobacter H. pylori, but you're lucky if you catch it. Sometimes they're in biofilms. This is the way, another way they've adapted, uh, pathogens have adapted uh, to really evade uh, being killed, you know, and taken out of the system. That's why we need good bacteria, good, good gut flora because they have really targeted antimicrobial peptides and defenses and all kinds of chemicals that can really target particularly the pathogen, you know, that they're dealing with. We have this epi epidemic of Lyme right now, but you know what? Prebiotics and uh, a lot of probiotics, they're shown to release antispirochete antimicrobial peptides. They wow. particularly target Lyme. You know, we haven't changed. Our Lyme landscape hasn't, hasn't changed. What has changed is we've lost our good gut flora. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They've been massacred, massacred with yeah. antibiotics and and then yet in functional medicine we're still continuing to do the same even high dose berberine high dose oregano oil high dose garlic all of them in vitro are shown to kill off good pifido and lacto so we need to be so careful not to knock out what's already on the edge brink of extinction um that's how we can resurrect health op optimally we don't want to knock out more diversity and the strains that are just barely hanging on there we need yeah. to try to resurrect them all Yes, yeah, so that's why you told me that you you add the probiotics while you're you're doing the yeah. too, right? Yeah. Not everyone tolerates it, yeah, but most ninety eight percent of clients usually can. I'll tell you the cases that can't. The the ones that have the deepest dysbiosis and usually co infections, they don't tolerate our probiotic. Okay. So Lyme and co infections like allergia and S plasmosis, um, uh, Babesia, you know, any, any one of those, you know, they can have really deep dysbiosis. They're actually allergic to lactobacilli and they usually have strep antibodies too. And they're usually really agitated because strep has this effect of creating so much inflammation and neuroinflammation. Mm -hmm. They don't act very calm. You know, they may look calm on the outside, but when you query them, they're, they're not that calm. Okay. Okay. So tell us about the bifido maximus. I'm saying it right. The probiotic. Yes, Bifida Maximus. Right? Yeah. Which I am well, now I, I, going to start carrying. <laughs> oh, you're so awesome. That's so great. Congratulations, congratulations on your new clinic site, too. Like, I hope oh, it goes really you. well with your move. And, like, yeah, it goes awesome. Yeah. Um, Bifida Maximus has been around for a while. Uh, we, we love it. It's uh, super high ultra potency. So, that's part of the benefit of it. It can really fill in for what we're missing. And then it can actually help resurrect the, uh, the other species that we can barely detect on gut testing. Because what it does is it's the foundational flora that resurrects the mucosa. And then when we resurrect the mucosa, um, then it builds from there. We have the mucosa eating flora, and then we get into the food fermenting flora. That's what we want, all, want to ultimately bring back. But we have to get the foundation set. We can't be built on sand. It has to be solid on mu mucus. <laughs> Uh, um, and uh, uh, people really tolerate it. It's histamine-free, and with a lot of SIBO or fungal overgrowth and brain fog and body fat fatigue issues, we see high lactic acid, so it's actually delactate-free. Um, these, all these strains don't produce that high lactic acid. Eventually, we do want people to diversify and bring on actually histamine-producing strains, mm -hmm. um, like fermented foods and other things. But in the beginning, if they don't tolerate other things, we first do ours and then quickly you know, use that go-to-maintenance. Like Once or twice a week is really good for maintenance. Mm -hmm. And then they can, you know, uh, add on a bunch of other probiotics. So we also love soil probiotics like Megaspore. And um, have you heard of Terraflora from Environmedica? No, They're fantastic. Mm -hmm. It's actually symbiotic. So there's reishi, really good mushrooms in it, oh. um, some arabinogalactan, and a um, uh, really particular kind of fucose from a uh, clean, really clean seaweed soy source. People feel amazing on it. They don't get sick anymore. All their upper respiratory infections, even strep can really go down a lot with terraflora. Um, I found that, you know, whenever I skip it, I start getting sick kind of, you know, if I'm run down and traveling a lot. Um, so there's a lot of great options we have to build diversity again. And then the gut testing can tell us, you know, where the diversity is because right. these gut tests are able to measure that for us. Okay. 
Okay, perfect. Well, I'm excited to start carrying that. So thank you for um, letting me try it. That's uh, it's a really awesome product. And, uh, you know, I had some good ones from Custom Probiotic too, but I know that you have done this extensive research and there's a reason why you're using that. So um, I think this whole podcast definitely validated that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, we love Custom. They're awesome. Yeah, yeah. We just built it up so that it replaced it. it, it, it these are really the concentration and dimensions of actually the micro microbiome where we're missing, uh, you know, because of antibiotics or, or damage. Yeah. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. That's awesome. Yeah. So why don't you tell listeners where they can find you in the gut Institute? Yeah. Uh, the gut Institute.com is our main location. You can always ask, you know, inquiries. We also do a Facebook live every Tuesday at two o'clock. Well, most, most days. Um, uh, so for, uh, Tuesday, two o'clock, uh, Facebook live, um, Pacific standard time. And that's on the gut Institute Facebook page. And then we're also on Instagram and other media and Twitter. Um, we love sharing what we do. So coaches and clinicians, we offer um, a seminar every year, check it out. Uh, this year is the gut Institute.com backslash M M two Oh one nine stands for microbiome medicine two Oh one nine. It's a live seminar. We provide, you know, all the um, protocols that really will help, uh, bring up your practice to like get super great success in six months or less to lower body fat, brain fog, and fatigue. And we just love sharing what we do because it just really helps. Um, and we have the best tools in the industry there. We use a lot of um, also products besides our high potency probiotic. We have a lot of probiotic friends. They're all at the event. We also have lots of um, different parasite protocols and fungal protocols and viral protocols, like all the things you need as tools for your practice. So you can really find out what's going on and do, do different interpretive labs and apply the right protocols and then see rapid success for clients. And we have, um, you know, um, we have teaching. So uh, we're having a 50 hour gut certification mastermind launching to teach uh, clinicians uh, really go more in depth when they're interested, how to, how to um, address uh, things for their clients and different disease states. Nice. The fastest recovery. Yeah. So the, the MM2019, that, that event, that's the one that you were just telling me that's this week. Yeah, it's actually coming up uh, September 21st and 22nd, and we have a special going on. If people put MM25, they get 25% off tickets. Uh, so yeah, it would be really great to see any coaches and clinicians in the area or you know who are going to fly in. Uh, we have people coming from all over the world, Canada and all over the world. Um, it's a really fun event. Chris Shade is one of our speakers, and we have the AIP, Beyond AIP guru, uh, Jessica Flanagan. She's an FBN uh, certified practitioner. Um, she found that you know, after implementing our protocols um, uh, in 2016, people could rapidly expand their diet. They didn't have to go to low FODMAP anymore. They didn't have to go AIP paleo anymore or low carb SCB, any, any, you know, any of these like particularly really, really restrictive diets like specific carb diet or GAPS or keto. Um, she found that people could rapidly expand their diet. And that's what we see too. A lot of clients, they can only eat four foods a day and literally anything else causes them bloating. They can't tolerate greens or kale or spinach. In just a month or two, they can eat 40 foods. I'm so grateful for that. Even carbs again, without gaining 20 million pounds. And it's because we're really shifting the microbiome, resurrecting the good terrain and resetting rhythms. So they're no longer having, you know, cortisol crashes or high adrenaline, you know, wonky adrenaline, all these things break our gut down. We can't have that going on. Um, we can't heal the gut fully when that's all going down. Our, our ultimate goal is to heal and seal the gut and resurrect the flora, flora like you bacterium mimosum, you know, and others. Um, so that people can feel awesome and amazing again and eat anything they want if they want. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, is there any last words that you wanted to say? No, thank you so much for having me on. This was so fun, Jacqueline. I'm so grateful to um, be able to share with your audience. Yeah, yeah, me too. And I'm, I'm looking forward to learning more about, um, you know, actually attending some of your events and yes. being part of all the other things you have going on social media because I know you're definitely a wealth of knowledge. So thank you so much. And I'm sure my audience is saying thank you as well too. Thank you for listening to the Wellness Trinity Podcast. Be sure to subscribe for more wellness tips to help you achieve optimal health. Don't forget to rate and review so we can continue to bring you the best content. See you on the next episode.